Welcome to the Clarity Advisor Show, where you'll learn how to grow your team today. Join Ken Trubke and his guests as they discuss what works and doesn't work to grow your team in today's world. And now, your host, Ken Trubke. Hello, and welcome to the Clarity Advisor Show. Every business loses customers. And while most companies are actively looking to get new business and grow, very few companies go back to revisit lost or forgotten accounts. Well, my guest today specializes in helping companies win back lost customers. Through his company, appropriately named Winback Labs, Dan Fister focuses on helping companies recapture lost revenue. Welcome, Dan Fister. Great to be here, Ken. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, you're welcome. So what problem does Winback solve? That kind of set it up in the intro, but tell me exactly what you guys do and who are your typical customers? Sure. Um, Winback is basically a revenue. The whole idea is that it's a way of generating revenue from some of this very low hanging fruit in your business, your past customers. And it's also very low cost. And so the, the thing is, is that when you win back a past customer, there's all kinds of downstream benefits. You learn why they, why they left. So you understand new ways of retaining customers. So increased retention is down, is downstream. You also learn, um, what exactly your market is looking for right now. So to win them back, you have to give them what they're looking for right now. So, you know, we do uh, win loss analyses at the end of a win back campaign, you know, what they're looking for right now. So, and there's also market share, right? So when you increase, uh, you know, some people do win back just to increase market share. There's lots of reasons, but the core reason is uh, generating revenue, scaling revenue. At a level. So who would be a typical client for you? Basically, anyone who has relatively high attrition. So if you've got more than, say, 5% attrition a year, and you've been around, say, for three years or more, you're sitting on, you know, a, a little gold mine there. Because this is, this is really, as I mentioned before, this is really low-hanging fruit. So what makes you and your approach, what, is the, what makes the win-back approach unique? Well, I think that the thing about about WinBack is that there's so little written about it. There's so so little that's really talked about it. So what I did is I did a study, a WinBack study, and I found out, you know, why it works so well. Because like what happened was I know I'm I'm, I'm hopping ahead, but the way I discovered WinBack, it it was it was totally by a fluke, and through that I found there's all these things that WinBack does that that I needed right. It, 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 it gives me shorter sales cycles. So I need fewer resources for a sale. It's uh, it's much less expensive. Um, it's easy to engage past customers, right? Because there's already that level of familiarity. So there's so many reasons why. And, and that study led to some statistics. Can you share some of those numbers? Because when you and I talked earlier, I was blown away by some of the, the numbers that you had. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the biggest ones is what we found is that the average win back campaign generates $485,000. Now that's for a small to medium sized business, larger businesses, you know, generate millions. Um, the, uh, cost of reacquisition, what the study found was, uh, five, to, uh, under $5,000. So the ROI was, was pretty nuts. That's, um, then there's the sales cycles. What we found was that sales cycles are 70% shorter uh, when you do customer win. We can go into all, you know, all the reasons why, but 70% uh, shorter. So in other words, you can, in the time it takes to win one new customer, you can win back three old customers. So that's what that study found. And then a lot of what I found in that study was corroborated by other studies. So there is a study done in the Harvard Business Review. It wasn't done in it. It was, it was featured in the Harvard Business and that was a study of 40,000 lost telecom customers. And um, they had won back, this group had won back 31% of them. So you had over 12,000 customers came back. And we saw how did they come back? You know, it was like with there was all these different things that they did to win these customers back. So basically the rule of thumb is about one in four will come back, right? Harvard showed one in three. I showed one in four. And I've been talking to people who've done win back for years. And basically... 
at the low end, you're looking at 10%. At the high end, you're looking at 50 But, you know, rule of thumb is closer. To, you know, around the, the one in four. Well, well, I want to ask about what that campaign actually looks like and why people wouldn't do those. But before we get to that, you said 70% shorter cycle. So what makes it go faster to win someone back than to find someone new? So when you think of when you make a, a sale, right, you've got to source leads, then you've got to qualify them, then you've got to teach them about your product, then you've got to build a relationship, build trust, close, right? So you've got all of these very time-intensive things you need to do uh, when creating a sale. When you're winning back a customer, the sales cycles are so much shorter because you've already educated them on the product, right? You've already... Uh, built relationships. You've already qualified them. Um, you've uh, you've already closed them once. So you've already got had a contract. So you've already negotiated a contract, and things are so much faster the second time. You're probably an approved vendor. So there's all of these things, all these time intensive things that you had to do on the original sale that you don't need to do uh, in the win back sale. So why, if the, the numbers are so compelling, the sales cycle shorter, the the revenue numbers on average are hundreds of thousands of dollars, the timeline is 70%, so all these benefits, what is preventing companies from jumping in and trying to win back old customers? Well, there's a, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, one of them is that a lot of people, they don't want to go talk to their past customers. It's like, you know, they're probably angry with us. Uh, why would I want to do that? It's a lot easier just to go out and uh, and, and and win new. Um, but, you know, as Bill Gates said, you, know, you can learn more from an unhappy customer than anyone else. They're a greatest source of learning. But the fact of the matter is, is that less than half of the people have been left because of anything to do with you. They had changed circumstances. You know, new leadership came in, brought in their own people. They had a, they stopped having a need for the customer. But, uh, the main thing is, is that, so there's that, so I'm sorry, I'll just backtrack. So that's the emotional component. There's a rational component. People just don't look at win back. You take a look at uh, that. So they're not aware of the numbers, right? The, you know, you, you take a look at how many books are written on sales, like probably 90% of them are sales, you know, maybe seven or eight or 9% of them are on, you know, retention and everything post sales. And then, you know, there's just nothing left after win back. I mean, it's, so there's that, there's the, uh, we've always done things this way in our company. And so, you know, we built our company based on selling and we never did win back. It's not part of the, not part of the deal. And, you know, I've got some, you know, very interesting people I talked to who actually proved that win back worked in their company. They proved it. They made tons of, they brought, brought in tons of money. And when leadership found what they what they did and how they did it, they uh, they blew it all off. They didn't want to do it, even after they were aware of it, because that's not how we do business here. So even in the face of actual results of increasing revenue, now granted it's not new revenue, but it's kind of new because it went away. But, but yep. increasing in revenue, and and the leadership decided to not pursue that approach. Exactly. I mean. There's uh, one woman, and uh, she knew the benefits of Winback. So she create as soon as she became the branch manager of the, this national agency, uh, she she got a, she's the branch manager of a, of a small branch. She came in. The first thing she did is she looked at the CRM. She saw all kinds of dormant and uh, lost accounts. What she did is she knew that this was the low hanging fruit in the business. So she went and she really pursued those. And uh, at the end of the year, she won branch manager of the year. And the main reason she did is because she had, you know, she brought in a lot of new business. But what happened was she also earned $700,000 in win back revenue. And that put her over the top of, of the New York and Chicago offices, which were the two biggest, two biggest markets. She was in a much smaller market. So she was all excited. She thought, okay, we're going to bring win back all across the company. I can spearhead this, you know, it's, it's so amazing. And, um, they shut her totally down. They were totally not interested. People got, their feathers were ruffled because she had just done this thing that nobody else had done. And uh, she made other people look foolish. And three weeks later, she quit. And um, there's another story of another gentleman, Carl Adamson. Um, he saw, he wanted, you know, 
he was this is what he saw what he did was uh, he saw the the he was a buyer at this uh, food company and he saw all these people who were making all this money and they were all in sales and so uh, he was a young guy and he wanted to try his hand as a sales manager said um you know no you, you know stay in your lane and he kept he kept crossing the sales manager and finally the sales manager gave him these six dead accounts like people that were never coming back so uh so carl uh his very first one he won that customer back at six times the average contract value of the company and what did they do <laughs> he got hauled in he got hauled into the ceo's office him and the sales manager the sales manager almost got fired and uh again we don't do business like that here do not do that now to their credit they did turn around a, a, a while later but that was that was like this isn't how we do things crazy isn't it it is it's it's shocking so and that raises the question so who are your contacts are you able to reach in and talk to sales managers and c-level executives and propose a win back campaign or are they so resistant to that's not how we do things that you're actually working more with directly with with sales people rather than the sales management and leadership well it's it's really a question of awareness when people see the numbers you know like um there's been a lot of really serious win backs done nancy harhat did a 68 million dollar win back Jeb Blunt, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he wrote um, Medical Prospect. He did a win back that was worth uh, 100000 bucks a, a week. And it was the, the, the her, his client's biggest sales initiative of the year. You know, I've done millions and I've posted about it for, for years on one. So when people, the people, some people, when they become aware of it, you know, they, they want to talk about it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, that's, that's where I come. I come, it's more inbound for me than outbound because trying to turn somebody around or try to find people who have an open mind towards this sort of thing, it's very difficult, right? Sales is about new customer acquisition. A, a su small subset of people see that if they can really increase retention, that'll really make their company sing. And then there's a tiny little subset after that uh, on win back. So interesting. Well, I've got more questions for you, Dan, including a little bit of origin story from you and all you got into doing win back. So we'll cover those things on the other side of the break. Stay with us on the Clarity Advisor Show. Is your business where you want it to be or on track to get there? Clarity Advisors helps business leaders improve communication and get your team aligned and engaged for greater success. We specialize in helping you streamline your sales and operating systems to improve efficiency and grow your profits. Call or text Ken at 616-822-2998 to have a complimentary 12-minute call to see what some clarity could do for you. Okay, welcome back to the Clarity Advisor Show. Today, we're talking with Dan Fister of Winback Labs about getting those customers that left you to come back and recover that lost revenue. So Dan, take us back before uh, Winback. Uh, what were you doing in your earlier career and what led you to starting the Winback Labs? Well, um, a number of years ago, I started a, a business with a couple of uh, other people and um, the business was doing pretty well uh, until 2016. And uh, at that time, the wheels came off. Before that, we generated over fifty thousand customers, and you know things were going pretty well. And then, and then in two thousand and sixteen, like attrition just went through the roof, and we couldn't figure out why. Like we'd been through the dot com bust, and we'd been through the financial crisis of two thousand eight. There's the, these external variables that you know that that caused losses then, but this was different. And um, so what I did is. Uh, like our back was kind of against the wall because like normally when we lose a customer, we reach out to them three times. If they don't come back, we figure that's it. They're gone. So, um, but because this was such a big deal, this was really impacting our bottom line. I just threw everything I could at the, at the wall. Right. And I created this win back program and um, it, it turned out to be 
Like I was, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't very optimistic, right? Because these are pretty crappy leads. We've already gone after them three times. What are the chances they're going to come back now with this special program? And what happened was, um, it was, it was shocking. It was, this was after 20 and 20 years of marketing, it never made that much revenue in that short a period of time at that low of a cost. And I became like this total win back evangelist. I told all my friends who owned businesses about it. And, uh, so after that, um, I wanted to keep learning. So what I did is I kept optimizing and optimizing my, my, uh, win back. And after I ran out of things to optimize where I couldn't think of anything else, that's when I started to study. I thought, oh, this is great. There's, I don't see, there's no publicly available win back statistics out there. So I can create those. Um, and I can talk to a whole bunch of people who do win back. Right. So I did the study and, uh, Boy, was it tough to find people to talk to about uh, Winback, I'll tell you. Um, I reached out to this woman who wrote a Winback book uh, like 20 years ago. Because that was the only Winback book I could find. There's other books that say Winback in the title, but they're not Winback books. But this this was a tremendous Winback book. And and her name's Jill Griffin, and she wrote it with Michael Lowenstein. And she said that, I told her about, the, about what was going on. And she said that when she did her book, they had to do an extra year of research. They had to commission an extra year of research because so few people would talk about their win back. They, they found, they thought of it as just secret sauce and they didn't want their competitors to know about it. And so, I mean, geez, I reached out to her. First set was 500 people, you know, 500 the revenue leaders, CEOs, CFOs, CMOs, founders of SMBs. And I think only, I think out of those 500, I only got 17 people or 15 people. Less than twenty to uh, to to talk about their stuff, but you know, over time, I reached ended up reaching out over four thousand people, about one hundred and seventy win back. And I'm telling you way more detail than you need to know about that. But anyway, so I did the study, um, got some great statistics that were relevant to SMBs, um, and then um, I wanted to keep talking to people about win back, right? Because it's fascinating to me, like all the different ways you can do win back, all the different approaches. So I started a win back marketing podcast. And uh, now what I'm doing is I'm writing a win back book called Million Dollar Win Back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share everything I learned in these years of win back uh, in that book. It's so interesting. I, I love the detail because to hear how, you know, so there's so few people doing that. And yet the people who are doing it are so reluctant to share because it's working so well. They don't want anyone else to catch on. I think that's such a great business irony right there. And so, and now you're going to blow the lid off the whole thing and share it with everybody. So that's, that's, that's terrific. So you mentioned the word campaign a couple of times, Dan. So what exactly does a win back campaign look like? I'll give you a high level view and you can tell me where you'd like to dig down. Okay. So you've got this group of lost customers and the campaign starts with identifying the ones that have got the best win back potential. So um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but lifetime value doubles or more for customers that you win back. My study showed that, that study in Harvard uh, Business Review showed uh, 110%. The second lifetime value is 110% of the first lifetime value. So the second lifetime value is a real, I mean, the lifetime value is a fantastic indicator of what they're going to earn in the future. Um, and then there's other things that you put in like um, recency. So the more recently you lost a customer, the more likely they're going to come back. Now, if, they're, if it's a one-year contract, then you, you know, you only select people that are coming up you know, near the contract. So first step is identifying your best win back prospects. Then what you do is we reach out and we try to understand them. And so uh, first we do internal research. We talk to our customer facing teams and we ask them about these lost customers, um, what they think the biggest reasons why they left, what they think, what it will take to win them back. And then what we do is we go out to your past customers. We, we talk to 20 or 30 of them. And what we find is the things that are most important to them, right? So we find the big rocks. This is our qualitative survey. So we find out what's important to them. And after about 20 or 30 calls, you start hearing the same thing over and over. After you do that, you know you found the big rocks, okay? Then what we do is we do a qualitative analysis. So what we do is say there's three reasons why people are leaving and two reasons that will drive them to come back. So then what we do is we do the qualitative. We just put out a really short survey and say, what, what's most important for you here? What's most important for you here? So now we're getting into the ranking of what's most important 
why are the bigger biggest reasons left? What are the biggest reasons why they'll come back? Now we know what to put in our messaging. We know what to hit at the top and what to not worry about so much. I'm, I'm right. I, I know I'm giving you a very treetops view, but uh, so so you've got so you've got your most likely people to come back. I'm sorry. So you've got uh, your best prospects, best potential prospects based on past um, lifetime value and stuff. Then you've, uh, now you understand them, what it'll take to get them back. And then what we do is we take um, all of that knowledge and we create a uh, win back messaging, win back offers based on what they told you, a win back best practices and uh, what is most important to your company. So if your company is mainly concerned with generating more revenue at a low cost, we'll create a campaign based on that. Yeah. And messaging based on that. If you're more concerned with market share, we'll do something like based on that. So, and if you want to, if you want it to be most profitable, if you want a, a highly profitable campaign, then we'll focus on that. So just from a real top level view, uh, regular campaign, you just try to generate as much revenue as possible. Now, if you want market share, you might go after a lot more people. You might really broaden the number of uh, people you go after, and you might spend a lot more time and effort trying to get them because you don't you don't need to, to to be as profitable because you want that market share right and and say you want you you want the opposite you want everything to be as profitable as possible so then what you'll do is you'll select customers that are the highest margin right so you'll you know and the, the ones who need the uh, least amount of uh, hand holding and work so there's all kinds of different approaches to this and that's what we how we finish off with the marketing you know, the, uh, the messaging and the offers. Yeah, that's terrific. I appreciate you breaking that down. That's a, that's a great process. And so I would imagine as you describe the differences between if you want like a high profit campaign or a market share campaign, is that something that you're doing with the company or are, are they telling you that's what they want to do? How, how do you get to the point of knowing how to, how to target the, the campaign itself? How do you work with the company to get there? Sure. So, Let's just say that you're my client, right? I would say, Ken, um, this is what Winback can do. You know, we can do a mixed approach where we go for the maximum market share, maximum uh, profit, maximum revenue, right? And so we do this blended effect. And that's one way that we'll do things. Or you could say, you know, Dan, I want to really increase market share. And because market share is our number one strategic goal for this year. So what we'll do is we will create campaign that has many different approaches. We'll, we'll layer our approach, right? So first we might do direct mail, then we might do a special event, then we might do texting, then we might do handwritten notes. You know what I mean? So we would layer all these things on top of one another as the more you approach, the more you're going to win back. And each one of these approaches will cost a little bit more, right? So if you do telephone outreach, like, so you get the lowest hanging fruit with maybe the direct mail, right? And then the text, you get the second lowest hanging fruit. And then the direct hand calls, well, those are those are a lot more expensive. If you're willing to pay that money for that, then you're going to get, uh, you know, a lot more people coming back. And I'm making this really simple, right? It could be something more like, you know, events and, and other things, and lumpy mail sending. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of things. You sure, do. sure. So with all the skepticism on the front end of this, I would imagine once you've been working with someone and they've seen those results, that they would either become an ongoing client and run multiple campaigns, or maybe just they do it annually. Well, what is typically once somebody's kind of seen the light and seen the success and and reaped the benefits of this win back approach, how do clients then change their mind and, and start working with you differently going forward? Well, you know, the beauty of, of Winback is it it pays and pays and pays. So you do this first campaign, like, and during the first campaign, you're going to learn so much about your past customers, like what drives them to come back? Because they say one thing, right? But then when you do your win-loss analysis at the end of the campaign, they said we came back for these three reasons, but then you, you do the win analysis and you find, oh, these are actually the top three things, like the realistic, you know, that's what actually, that's what they say. Then, we, then you talk to the people that didn't come back. You find out, oh, here's the three reasons they didn't come back. And so 
what you do in your second campaign is you take all that knowledge and you change your messaging, change your offer, right? And then, and then your third campaign, you get even more nuanced and you win back even more people. And um, so that's one aspect. There's another aspect of this is that you also learn um, how to increase your win rates, right? Because you're People that are coming back right now, they're coming back because you've just given them something that that market wants right now. And that's what these win-loss analyses at the end of a campaign really bring out. So there was a, Inc. Magazine did a win-back campaign, for, you know, getting subscribers back. And at the end of the campaign, they did this win-loss analysis. What they found was that the people who came back were people who wanted longer articles, the number of takeaways that they figured out for themselves. The people who didn't come back wanted shorter articles, one takeaway, and they wanted to be spoon fed it. Right. So the people who would come back, this is what they wanted. So what they did is they shifted their their sales and their marketing to go after those more uh, higher value customers. Right. So that increase that increases win rates because you you're you're getting closer to your ideal customers. So you're not going after as broad of a spectrum as people, you're going after a slightly narrower piece. So there's, you know, there's just so many layers to this because what you're basically doing is you're understanding your loss, your customer at a much deeper level. You're understanding why they leave. You know, how many, how many holes in your leaky sales bucket can you plug when you get deeper and deeper into understanding why people leave for real, not just what they say, but when you take a look on the, on the other end and you see what exactly, why exactly they yeah, it's, it's just, again, so interesting that there's so much, as you said, gold out there for recapturing lost revenue and following this process, the way you've explained it, yeah, you can't help but learn about your customers, which is going to help going out when you are getting those new customers. So it helps both recapturing lost revenue and creating new revenue. It's just so interesting. And I really appreciate you walking us through that process. I can't wait for the book for even more details and uh, you know, step-by-step how to do this. Uh, so in the meantime, though, Dan, who should reach out to you and what would be the best way for them to get a hold of you? If you've got significant um, attrition, if you've got high margins, you've really got to look at them, you know, because there's just so much uh, sitting there. Um, but anyone who, uh, who has, um, you know, if you've got a bunch of lost customers and you, find it, you want to find out what to do with them, Visit my LinkedIn profile. I've got all kinds of articles. We'll walk you through all kinds of things that you can do. And that's a great place to start. Terrific. Or you can email me at Dan at Winback Labs. No, absolutely. And we'll get those uh, links to your LinkedIn and your email in the show notes. And yeah, this has just been great. I, I feel like I need to go back and, and listen again to, to get the notes and the process. I, mean, I can't wait for your book to come out. So Dan, thank you so much for making time to be with us today. I know we fought through some technical issues, but uh, appreciate you persevering and uh, look forward to having you out again. Thanks so much for having me, Ken. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It. And that brings us to the end of another Clarity Advisor show. So thank you so much for joining us. And if you could be so kind as to leave a five-star review or whatever you think is appropriate, on the platform you are watching or listening right now, that would be amazing. And we'll see you next time on the Clarity Advisor Show. Thank you for listening to the Clarity Advisor Show. Clarity Advisors is a speaking, training, and consulting firm specializing in helping you simplify your sales and operating systems to improve efficiency and grow your profits. Connect with Clarity Advisors today to learn more about how they can help you improve communication and get your team aligned and engaged for greater success.